It's uh, September 25th, 2019, and this is episode 4 of Plane Savers Down Under. And today we're halfway through our journey from Brisbane down to Melbourne. After this, it's all headed north. And we're today we're at the Australian National Aviation Museum down at Moorabbin Airport, the major light aircraft airport for the city of Melbourne. Before we go in, I'd like to thank um, Tony Palmer, uh, Wayne and John for showing me around, and the other guys, Tony, Chris, Peter, thank you very much for your friendship, and thank you very much for the invitation to join you for lunch. Not bad, as yourself? Ah, this one is not being restored here. This one is coming apart and going out to the museum at Mildura. Okay. One good thing about watching these things is guys underneath getting down and dirty. And I'll try and edit out any language about nuts and bolts that won't come undone. Uh, don't I know it? <laughs> well, have fun, gentlemen. Okay. And now we have a Gloucester Meteor. We already saw one of these up at Haas. This is a two seat version, the trainer version. The advantage here is we can climb up and have a look in the cockpit and I can give you a good look of early jet technology. put the light on so you can see a bit more obviously there's still some instruments missing but in general most of it's here the old-fashioned canopy unlike the clear canopy of today this one has a lot of metal bracing here's the seat for the Certainly nothing very plush about them, is there? And here we have the gannet again, even better view of the contra-rotating propellers. We can get up a bit closer to it out here, give you a look and show you what a substantial aircraft it was. If you can see my terrible profile, shows you where I come to at the front of the engine, how high and how big an aircraft the Gannet was. A giant of an aircraft. The museum here is one of the older ones in Australia. It started off in 1962 and it's an all-volunteer organisation like many of the year museums in Australia. Here we have a Westland Wessex. 
This one, the rotors have been removed at this stage. And over here we have an aircraft that anywhere in the world is very rare, the Vickers Viscount. None flying anywhere and very few preserved anywhere. This one was with Trans Australia Airlines. Um, I'm not sure what series it is, I think it's the bigger 800 but we'll hopefully we'll see a a plug soon with the Rolls-Royce Dart engines here buried under the wing or hidden under the wing of the Bristol freighter is the Kiowa helicopter. This one's being worked on to bring it up to full static display standard, like the ones we're working on up at Caboolture. And behind that is the Bristol freighter. Quite a few of these were used in Australia. This one, Tasmanian Devil, with Air Express was obviously used for the freight services across Bass Strait, Tasmania. It was very interesting the uses these Bristol freighters got put to in Australia. We used to run a operation called Air Beef up in the northern part of Western, Western Australia in the Northern Territory, flying freshly chilled or killed beef to markets down south. Here's the clamshell doors and we get a good view of the arrangement of the Bristol freighter. Up there you can see some of the control linkages and that because the cockpit is directly above us. There's the cockpit up the top there, if I can get the sun out of the way for you. Thank goodness the sun's come out. It was supposed to be a maximum of only 16 degrees today. Summer weather for Mikey and the people up at Yellowknife. For someone from Queensland, to use an Australian expression, this morning it was bloody freezing. We'll go up inside the Bristol. You can see it's obviously used for meetings. I'll stop here and turn the torch on. So it gives us a bit more light in here. Here's the wing carry through box that supports the wing. And obviously the tick dictates the maximum height of any cargo you can carry. There's the ladder to climb up into the cockpit and there's the hatch that you can get up into the cockpit. These provided very reliable service across Bass Strait to the end of the islands in the Strait, King Island and Flinders Island. Here's a great view of the structure, internal structure of the aircraft. Remember, it's just a sheet of aluminium between you and the world outside. They're carrying, protecting all the cables. Yeah, maximum load 
106 or 10,600 pounds. Or what about five ton in our old fashioned thing? That's an access to something up there, I'm not sure what it is. And that gives you an idea of the internal structure of an aircraft. Being a freighter, there's nothing here. All there is is the floor and the tie down, the tying down the cargo. Over here we have a Canberra. Again, one of the Australian built Canberras. Built by GAF, the government aircraft factories. This one's in pretty good nick. And even better, we can go in and have a look. So, here you go everyone. Down in there is the bomb aimer's position. A lot of the instruments are here, but obviously there's still some to come. Here we go with the pilot seat. And here is the second person seat. I suppose in here you'd call them everything other than the pilot. Navigator, engineer. Go down and crawl down and do the bomb work. Here's all your electronics. Excuse me, I'm trying not to fall off the steps here while I get these photos for you. Here we go, up into the pilot's controls. We have a glazing over the cockpit to protect the inside. And here we go. Canberra was an incredible aircraft for a time, handled very much like a fighter. There's your control pedestal there, up the top, and your rudder pedals down the bottom here. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed your look inside a Canberra bomber. And I'll make sure I don't fall down on the way out. Rolls Royce Avon engines, same as Australia used in the what we call the Avon Sabre. The, uh, yeah, have out got here in the wheel wheel. Again, you can see some of the structure of the aircraft here. The main legs of the undercarriage and the retraction gear. We didn't have a chance to have a real good look at a camber at Haas because it was sort of buried away and I couldn't get over to it, but they're a very elegant looking aeroplane. Very accurate. They, the RAAF flew these in Vietnam in the ground attack role and they distinguished themselves because they were incredibly accurate in delivering ordnance to the target. Okay, let's head up into the Viscount now and have a look at that.
Here's the flight attendant's position and the galley as you enter. You normally didn't enter from the rear, this was where they were loaded. And the storage here. You entered through the big oval door, usually up the front. Very sophisticated overhead storage bins. One class. Very comfortable seating and heaps and heaps of leg room which you don't get today in anything. So I think probably in Australia we get a bit more than most. Here's your overhead consoles. Some of the others have been taken out, but these ones have been left in you have a look. The big oval windows. There you go. Then we have more storage here and on the other side. And here we are in the cockpit. Here you go. Again, 1950s era, era technology, except not radial engines this time, but Rolls-Royce Dart Turbo Props. I'll come out a bit so you can sort of get a, a view of the whole cockpit there. All the instruments, control levers, throttles, trim wheel down the side there, flaps lever, Ability for reverse thrust or pitch, you know, propeller it, driven aircraft. Interesting rudder pedal arrangement down there, the ability to adjust it. Obviously, they're only a two man crew, no flight engineer in these aircraft. They were basically a short-haul airliner. Quite a sturdy undercarriage in the Viscount. Here's the exhaust for those darts. I'll see if I can, being an older chap, get in here a little bit and show you a bit more up in here, of the, up in the undercarriage well of the Viscount. Tubes coming out of the turbine to heat the cabin. I don't know. There, you are. that's the inner workings of the Viscount. So I can get out without knocking the scorn. Cargo hatches. Nose wheel under carriage. Weather radar. And here's the front door. In the earlier model Viscounts, that was an oval door rather than the squarish door that you see on this later model. Uh, Wayne. Uh, we're lucky today. Wayne has invited me into the restoration area. I'll let Wayne walk around, just walk around and talk to it and tell okay. us what it is. All right. These are Wessex uh, rotor blades. They had the uh, depleted uranium counterweights in the tips and the ADF sent down a crew um, last week to take them all out. They're there for two days for three people, taking those apart. This is all wing components off our DC-3. 
Our DC3 is away, being restored at the moment. Oh, you do, you do. Okay, well you talk. Yeah. So these are all components of the DC3. What are they, the wing root fillets, are they? Yes, that's it, yeah. Okay. The runner and the uh, horizontal stabilizers. Mm -hmm. This is a good example of the corrosion that we need to work on on these aircraft. These are all very valuable to us because we can use these as templates for new components. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, flap off the um, of the gannet, which has now been starting to repair it. They've had seized linkages and so on, so it's all been repaired uh -huh. at the moment. So these are the linkages here that are all That's being correct. done up. Yep. They all got to be taken off and repaired. Mm -hmm. oh, they would broke it. Yep. The and that's the top. flaps down the bottom? That's it. Okay. And this is, what, the middle section of that wing fold, is it? I think it is, yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. And this is our bus. Uh, the bus is CAC bus, so that's significant to us. So that's we're getting a new motor put in. Okay. Uh, you might wonder why the bus is significant. CA stands, CAC stands for... Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, and it built a lot of the aircraft that are, are you, were used in Australia. There's the CAC, Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, and GAF, the uh, Government Aircraft Factory. There you go. And we've got a complete collection of all CAC aircraft, GAF aircraft, and DAP aircraft. There you are. There's a very rare thing for you to see, the only museum with a collection of all CAC and GAF aircraft. Take you down and show you some of the other parts. Uh -huh. That's the wings off our uh, DC-3. Okay, there's the wings off the C-47. Is the C-47 a DC-3? Oh, I think it was a C-47, then it got converted to DC-3. Okay. See that registration there, ANH? That means the aircraft was probably operated by Australian National Airways. It was. Yep. Yeah, it was. Wayne confirmed that. Now, ANA, up until about 19... 47 was the largest airline in the southern hemisphere and by route miles one of the largest airlines in the world. It pioneered a lot of aviation in Australia and started off primarily flying between Tasmania and Melbourne and then flew first domestically all over Australia then got involved with flights to Ceylon which is now Sri Lanka and to through BC PA, British Commonwealth Pacific Airlines, using DC-4s to San Francisco and Seattle. Sorry, and I meant to say Vancouver. This is a genuine black cat, one of the ones used to drop mines in Manila Harbour. From Darwin to, Mil uh, to, Mil uh, to Manila and back again. There you go. There's a flight for you in this slow, grinding old aircraft from Darwin. Drop mines in Manila Harbour, then back to Darwin again. All at night, Brent and Celestial Navigation, long trips. <laughs> this is a interesting aircraft. For a while there, we thought this might become the RWS primary trainer. It's the Gaff Wimmera. It's uh, solely designed here in Australia. As usual, politics and all the other stuff got involved. Um, and then we decided to do something silly and then in 85 instead of supporting our own industry we bought the Pilatus PC-9 from Switzerland. Even though the PC-9 is a brilliant aircraft this one would have done the job, done it as well and it would have been built here. And here's a photo of the Wimmera mock-up to give you an idea what the completed aircraft would look like. And this is from a photo by Robert Nash. Now here's a treat. This is all the gear for a whole heap of different aircraft that's to be restored. Engines, wings, fuselages, this is a belly of a uh, boomerang. Yeah, boomerang. There's a frame and a boom. Uh, well, we are framing the belly of a boomerang. 
What's this, a double member here? Double yeah. member from the yes. gannet? Yeah. This is what our chairman does. He builds vintage aircraft for a living. Uh -huh. And this is the stand of our boomerang. Oh, section. here we are. Here's a, a, a good view of a boomerang that's in stage of being built up by the chairman of the museum. Not often you'll get to see something as close up as this of something that's being built. Beautiful workmanship. Superb, yeah. does. Look at the workmanship in this, the welds, the material. It is absolutely superb. There we are, we can get inside where the rudder pedals are. You can see some of the instruments are starting to appear. This is a excellent job. But Ever heard of the CA-31? Oh, the CA-31. This was... We got a mock-up. This is an aircraft that never happened. This is the mock-up of the CA-31. The only one in existence. And if you can see this, it's quite a nifty-looking yeah, aircraft. The wing leading to the Mirage, so you can yep. imagine. It was almost a Mirage. Yep, it was the trainer for the... Or designed to be the trainer for the Mirage and delta winged and this is the only remaining i suppose specimen of anything to do with a ca31 and here is a mock-up of what the ca31 would look like had she been completed and this is from a photo taken by brendan cowan what are they with hmm? oh whack a trainer Yep, there's the, all the wings for it. Oh, again, another CAC developed aircraft that did get into service with the RAAF, the CAC Wacket. And later on, there you go, there's the, the tail or the rear fuselage of the CA 31, gives you an idea what it would look like as a complete aircraft. I, that looks like the tail cone, no, no, probably not down there. I think the tail cone, no, it could be the tail cone. It could be the yeah. tail cone of it down there. But there you go, there is the CA, uh, the CAC Wacket. There you are, there's the Nomad fuselage. That's a, this is a 22, yep. the smaller one. So that's here, we've got, looks like a little gyrocopter. This was uh, used for uh, anti-drug patrols out of uh, uh, Florida. Oh, okay, this is one of the ex- um, one's used by the well, Coast Guard, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, the US Coast Guard in America, they used a number of nomads yeah. and used them for drug interdiction. There you go, there's the wing attachment area. You can see that. Again, the undercarriage. And there we go. Oh, we're getting a treat. Wayne is showing us everything. I was just going to walk around and have a look at things, but we're really getting the opportunity to see everything. Thanks very much, Wayne. There's the down the back. So uh, this one will be restored soon to static display. Yep. Look at this. Just full. Go down the back there. I'll show you some more. Oh, there's more. There's more, mate. There's, there's more. There's more. Yeah. Look at this. What's that out of a um windjill, is it? I'm not sure. It looks like it might be a, I'm not sure. It looks like a bit like the firewall of a windjill, but I'm not sure. Uh, and down yeah. there, go down and poke your head under there. What's there behind you? What's that? Yeah, we got a sycamore. That's it. One of the yeah. three that we use at Woomera. This one was uh, then bought by J. Rowe over here and used uh, uh, for uh, civilian work, uh, purposes. And it fell over on the side up at Falls Creek and killed the guy. Oh, that's no good. No, it's yeah. good for him. That's this one has been used at uh, Woomera, the, which is the rocket testing site in Australia in the desert one of three, yeah. and we used um, we were one of the leading countries in space research until Polly's decided that that wasn't a great idea and that excuse me having to go up the Polly's but it's true and you probably all know the same thing when it comes to aircraft um, inside it was probably out at Maralinga when the atomic tests were on What's okay, what have we got? Ansett. A link trainer. Oh, we got a link trainer from Ansett. This one was operational to about two years ago. Uh -huh. It was just 
used over here mm -hmm. and um, they used to spend two hours just to get ready for one hour operation. <laughs> Not terribly you know, efficient compared to today's flight simulators. All the uh, baffles and the air billows and all that sort of stuff on them. There's one here, this one's all done up. Then this is spare here as well. Mm -hmm. They were donated only six months ago to us. Mm -hmm. That one's a basic. There we are. And Something very all rare. The computers. Got the over there. There's uh, all gauges in that brown box there. Mm. The computer to run it. The plotting map. Everything. Gee, there we are. Once this is up and operating, won't there be a good one? I this is a mock-up of the cockpit area of the CAC Wimira that we saw outside. Uh, you'll see a lot of the work is in woodwork to um, show what was going to be made and what was going to be installed and where it was going to be installed and the workmanship on this woodwork is incredible. Behind that, we'll come to later in the second part, is the centre fuselage of a Lincoln. And here's a better view of the Lincoln centre section. Well, I hope you enjoyed part one. Part two will be posted up shortly.